Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are enjoying the content on this channel as of late. Uh, before you guys say anything, um, I just went to, a few hours ago, I went to a community pool uh, with my brother. I actually have never, have not been in a pool for like years, for, strangely enough. Uh, I'm usually an ocean guy, I love hanging out in the beach. Um, and I realized today why I don't go to the pool anymore. That's because the uh, chlorine does not do good on my eyes. So excuse me if I seem a little misty in my eyes. Uh, that is just because my uh, my eyes and chlorine do not mix. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so just trying to uh, let it wear off a little bit. Uh, so, so excuse me if you see my eyes just like, you know, uh, if, I, if you see me like touching my eyes or anything, that's just because chlorine sucks and, uh, you know, I'll t get, bring on the salt water. I, I will take salt water over chlorine any day, anytime. So, um, but, um, but just wanted to set that up, uh, just in case you guys see me doing stuff, but, um. Anyways, let's get into a topic video for today because we did a lot of like first impression videos um, over the past few days. So feel good to just break it up a little bit and do a little topic video. Um, these videos are kind of off the cuff kind of things. I don't really, you know, put too much thought into them. I just kind of hear something and I think about it a little bit and then I just turn on the camera. Um, I don't really, you know, put too much into it. Um, and, uh, you know, just basically just freestyling it, you know, just kind of like a vlog almost. Um, and that topic for today is a lot about Netflix and a lot about really the inevitability of, of Netflix, the fate of Netflix, um, really. Um, and we've been seeing a lot of this week, uh, where that, where Netflix is going and, um, and, uh, I just wanted to kind of, kind of look back on the past few years with Netflix and, you know, kind of addressing a couple of pieces that they've done or at, that they bought, let's be real. Um, and seeing as to how, where we are today. So, uh, I, I I'm going to go from 2019 because, um, there's, there's a good reason for it. Um, but, um, I feel like it's noteworthy also to get to 2019 first because we could just do 2020 first, but 2019 I think has something special to it, and that is in the form of The Irishman. Um, the Irishman uh, was a big hit for Netflix, critically and just in terms of reception. Um, I wouldn't say viewership or anything wise because if you look into it, The Irishman did not perform well for Netflix. Uh, that's why they're not working with Martin Scorsese again because of just the absurd budgets that he asked for for his movies. Um, that's why Netflix just said, nope. And that's why Apple said, how are you doing? You know? Um, so, um, but The Irishman was a big hit for Netflix critically. Uh, it won a lot of accolades, went to, went to uh, be nominated for a couple of Oscars. Um, so that was their big hit in 2019, really, and that, you know, there was a couple of so-so uh, hits there and there, but mainly The Irishman was their big hit. Um, and The Irishman is a film that I really like. I, I, if someone told me to watch The Irishman now, I would watch it. I think it's a very well-made film. Um, I don't think it's one of Scorsese's stronger films by any means. I mean, he's made much better work than The Irishman. Um, I haven't seen a lot of his modern films, to be honest with you. Like, I'll admit, I haven't seen The Wolf of Wall Street. Um, I haven't seen Hugo or anything like that. Um, I've, it's very limited uh, uh, in terms of modern Scorsese for me. I haven't, I've only seen a few pieces of his in the modern, uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the, like, the last, like, 10 years or so. Um, but of the pieces that I've seen, The Irishman definitely sticks out, so... Um, but I bring up The Irishman because quality-wise, that's really the last great thing that Netflix has really done in terms of, you know, stuff that they've bought or they've actually produced. 
because the the next few that we're about to address are films that I that I either find to be good or to be just eh, you know. Um, and it starts in 2020. Um, and in 2020, we had the trial of the Chicago Seven, um, which I thought was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I don't I didn't like it as much as the Irishman, but it was very tightly written, and I thought the cast was very good. Um, it was all around pretty solid. Um, but again, not as good as The Irishman. Um, I'm thinking of Ending Things, which I thought was pretty good as well. Um, I, pr I, think it's the, I think it's close to hitting The Irishman for me, but again, not quite. Um, and that's really it. I mean, for Netflix, again, The Trial of Chicago 7, again, not a big hit, but definitely uh, critically. It, again, got a lot of accolades and all the sore stuff. But I'm pretty sure it didn't hit, like, it didn't hit the charts or anything, so. Um, so, again, we're starting, so we're starting to see a pattern here. We're starting to see critically acclaimed films, but not much returns, so. Um, and then we get to 2021, and this is the, the, 2021 was a big year for Netflix. A, a big, big year. Because they had many pieces to, to to show that they can they can make profit and that they can uh you know that they're, they're more than just uh a creative company they are also are can be can operate as a business as well and from what from what i've been from what i've heard besides probably don't look up which i think is probably the only one that really made the charts the rest didn't really do much uh like we had the Lost Daughter, which again critically acclaimed, when when went on to be nominated for a couple of Oscars. Same thing for Power of the Dog. Um, Piece of a Woman, which went on to uh, not be nominated for an Oscar. And then Red Notice, which is a very interesting thing for Netflix because they put all their money in that well most of their money into Red Notice. And then uh, for this year, uh, what is that film called from the Russo brothers? I forget what it's called, but that movie as well, The Gray Man, it just came to me. Um, so, you know, they had a lot of fate with Red Notice, hoping that it'd be like a franchise of some sorts, and, um, from what I can, from what I heard, it did well, it did well enough for them to, to try to spark up a franchise or anything, but not like, like crazy numbers from what I remember. Don't Look Up, I, I remember being like kind of a hit of some kinds, of some kind, because of social media and just, uh, a lot of talk surrounding it. Um, it's kind of like the Joker of 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 2020 to 2021. Um, but again, we're sensing a pattern here. A lot of critically acclaimed films, a lot of films that people like, but not a lot of returns. Not a lot of like big money was made off of these movies. Um, and here's another thing to note about Netflix. Remove these movies, right? Remove these movies that I had just mentioned. What else does Netflix have to offer beyond that? They have a few shows there and there. We have Stranger Things, which at this point is getting tiresome. I think that yeah. there's not a lot of people out there who are excited for Stranger Things season four. I mean, obviously the hardcore hardcore fans are, but I dropped off at like season two, you know? So I could care less about Stranger Things season four because I don't I didn't see season, season three. Um, there's also, I think, like, Lucifer already ended. Um, like, like, they don't really have a lot of content beyond a couple of films that are in there. Um, and, like, some TV shows that are in there. Um, because, I mean, they're starting to lack even in films. We, like, going into this year, we had The Atom Project, which I heard was okay. We had Apollo Ted and a Half, which you guys know my thoughts on that. Um, and uh, uh, I think recently we had The Bubble, which I am very interested to see. I heard that one was not good. I, I am actually pr pretty curious to see that myself. Uh, a little bit of the masochist in me. I'm kind of wanting to see if it is if it's if it is a bad movie or not. Um, but. Uh, I guess the atmosphere around Netflix really is dull. I think that that's kind of the best word to describe it because, um, or tiresome, I guess, because 
they are putting out good work. I mean, as I said, there, there are some, there are films on that, on those lists that I do like. Like I said, I, I really like The Irishman. I like Trial of the Chicago 7. I'm thinking of ending things. The rest of those films, you guys kind of know my thoughts on. Power of the Dog, eh, Lost Daughter, eh. Um, like, it's not to say that they don't put out good work. It's to say that people just don't really, like, like, they're there just to see the film. They're not there to tune in for your service. And that's the problem with Netflix, is that Netflix is not the big giants as they used to because of two things, Disney Plus and HBO Max. Since those, the rest, I'm not going to mention the other, other streaming services like Peacock or anything like that, because those, those streaming services are going to die in like a year or so's time, because Peacock is like a whatever streaming service at this point. Paramount Plus... It has some legs, but, you know, uh, I mean, they really, it relates to Star Trek at this point. Um, that and Yellowstone, whatever. Um, then you have Hulu, which is basically like Disney Plus, like, two, almost, you know? Um, or like, you know, like, like, I don't know, like, like it, it's in conjunction with Disney Plus, you know? So, um, but, um... Like, there's a bunch of competition going around, and I don't think that Netflix has the ability to catch up, basically, or to really put out any content, really, that is going to appeal to mass audiences at this point. Because Disney Plus has all the Marvel shows, they have the Star Wars properties, they have their own content as well, um, they're, they're, they have Discovery Channel, they have all these big things. You go over to HBO Max, and of course they have the library of Warner Brothers you have DC classics from TCM. You have uh, their uh, 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 like you know animations like, and then you go over to Hulu and you got their um, indie prod indie films and you have uh, their uh, some of their exclusives over there as well like Fresh, which I think is a very good film. Um, like Netflix doesn't really have much of a of a strong identity as it used to and again I, like, I think the best words for it is just kind of dull and kind of just you know not really all that interesting because again they do put out good work but it's not enough to satisfy me to stay on the service you know it's enough for me to tune in for a brief minute but then just immediately walk away from because they don't really have a lot of content to really to really keep me invested otherwise like i said the tv shows they're not really all that interesting like i think we have bridgerton i think that's netflix i think um and that's like and now again that was like kind of like a one hit wonder kind of took off and now it's like whatever um stranger things again it was a, kind of a big hit when it came out and kind of really helped the netflix service in many ways um but uh at least for a certain time it did um but now it's like a whatever show um you have lucifer which just kind of came and went like uh and they're just in general with their their offerings in general with their movie selections and tv show selections it's not really that meaningful or that or really all that um like there's no need to have netflix and that's the big problem is that there's no need to have netflix beyond just one night where you need to watch that one movie that came out only on Netflix and then just walk away from, you know? Um, and it's been really hard ever since 2020 when Disney Plus and HBO Max came into the equation. Um, Cause ever since then, Netflix has been trying to justify its own existence beyond their original content. Um, and it's not been great. Um, Again, their their offerings have not been strong. Um, like you go to Netflix and they have like Dances with Wolves, and you go to HBO Max and they have the same exact thing there, plus a bunch of other classics and a bunch of other properties that you would not find on Netflix because services like HBO Max and Disney Plus want to fill want to have more content on their streaming service. So therefore, they're going to pull their content from other streaming services like Netflix so that they can get more subscription services it's just, it's just the game it's just how this comp it's just how this type of thing goes um 
how the competition uh, streaming wars are going, you know, um, or how you get to get an advantage, you know. Now, you might be thinking that, well, is, isn't HBO Max kind of like suffering right now, you know, in terms of subscription services? Yeah, they're kind of lackluster. I actually heard they're doing a little bit better. Um, I mean, last year was a kind of a train wreck um, with the whole, you know, same day premiere thing, which if you follow this channel for any period of time, you know my thoughts on that already. So, um, but, um, but they've actually been doing, I heard fairly well this year. They've been doing, they've been, they've been getting better. Um, not, not tremendously better, but getting better. Um, but it's perception that I think gives HBO Max the advantage though. HBO Max, you can watch the Batman right now. You can watch the Batman for now, uh, the Batman now on Nef on HBO Max, plus all the all their DC content, loads of classic films, uh, HBO TV shows, which really that's the hot, that's the that's the form of television that people are into nowadays. The HBO shows like Euphoria, Succession. Um, I I just watched Mare of Easttown like a few months few months back and I loved it. Um, like these are the shows that people are really into. Uh, I May Destroy You, I think, which is another one that people really liked. I think that's an HBO one as well. Um, Game of Thrones, uh, Game of Thrones. Um, so, um, you know, these are things that people are really into. People are not really into Stranger Things anymore. They're not really into Bridgerton. You know, that was kind of like a one hit thing. Um, I'm trying to think about what else Netflix has in terms of offerings they had the marvel shows for a long time i heard that that was kind of disney's choice though netflix didn't really have a say in that um but you know that they kind of you know that they wish especially now uh with the drop that they had recently with their uh like i think they lost like 50 million dollars or something like a big drop like a lot of subscription services just went away um and a lot of people were like oh my gosh that's crazy and i'm sitting there going that we, we should have, we should be expecting this by now, especially looking at the competition, uh, and especially with perception nowadays. Again, I think more people are interested in HBO Max and Disney Plus because of what they're offering and because of um, the the variety that they have on there than something with than something like Netflix, where again it just feels kind of dull, it feels kind of uninspired at this point and kind of tiresome so you know um so it, it's it's inevitable it's an inevitable depth that's coming to netflix and i don't see it happening for a very long time i i, I don't see it for like maybe another decade or so until netflix like completely shuts doors um but it is an inevitable death. We are we are definitely going to see Netflix die eventually, um, and reigning in the new streaming service giants, Disney Plus, HBO. I mean, Disney Plus is already crushing it as it is, but HBO Max is definitely going to follow suit eventually. Um, and you know, Hulu obviously being as it is, like these are going to be your new three giants. Netflix is going is is going to fall, and as we see, it's it's already falling a little bit. So. Um, so, you know, and I'm not sure all these new films that they have coming out, like Extraction 2, I, I don't know really who cares about that. Um, you have that Russo brother saying The Gray Man, which I, the, I don't know, that's kind of a 50-50, really. I mean, I think, really, honestly, some people might tune in to watch it, but not a whole lot. Just because the Russo brothers are directing it does not mean that they're going to come and watch it. If they're directing a Marvel movie, different story, but something original, not a lot of people are going to show up. Hi, Cherry. How you doing? <laughs> you know, because um, I don't think a lot of people want to see Cherry. So, you know, if they didn't show up for Cherry, why? Do, how do you expect them to show up for The Gray Man? You know, and you put a lot of money on that movie. So, um, so I don't know. I don't know how that's going to do. I, again, I think that's kind of maybe a disaster. I don't know. I, I really hope not, but you know, it seems likely. Um, so what could Netflix do to, to maintain some kind of relevancy? Um, 
it's funny because during the pandemic, they were actually trying to score a lot of big films like Godzilla vs. Kong at one point, James Bond. It, it's it's hard to really say because if they score stuff like that, Godzilla vs. Kong or James Bond, we might be in a different you know uh, uh, world you know in the streaming wars. Um, but since those did not happen, really also looking at just what they have to offer and really what they can what how what they could improve upon. Really, the improvements that they can do, like, like I said, maybe, um, maybe pushing more on original content, you know, uh, maybe changing up the the uh, the purpose of Netflix in general. Maybe you don't have to foster in a bunch of other people's movies; it could just strictly be your own films. Um, but even your own films and your own TV shows, I mean, um, but. I feel like that'd be very limiting, and I feel like that that would that would kill a lot of um, a lot of what you've built up at this point. It's really hard to say. It's really hard to say at this point. Again, especially with just the competition that's going on. Um, so I like again, it's an inevitable death. So even if I say anything, it's only delaying the inevitable. So I think. We all know the service is going to die eventually. We just don't know how long it's going to be. I predict maybe like in another 10 years or so. Um, or maybe even less than that. Maybe even half that. Who knows? Um, but it's going to happen eventually because of these new services. And, you know, they can put out Oscar, Oscar worthy uh, content all they want. But the fact of the matter is, is that people are just going to show up for that one day and then they're just going to leave because... You have nothing else to really offer, you know? So, um, you know, and, and content like that can only last you for so long, you know? Um, like, like it, it, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's sad, but it's, it's also inevitable. You know, I, I'm kind of talking in circles at this point because I really don't know what else I can say about Netflix because again, it's just, it's just kind of, kind of bland, you know, kind of bland at this point. Not really much variety to it. Not much where I can, like I can talk a lot about HBO Max or Disney Plus, but Netflix just feels like it's kind of just, kind of just, you know, needing a new set of wheels. But I feel that, that in doing so, it's just, it's not going to do it any big help just temporarily so so um so i think that i mean if you love netflix obviously keep your subscription but i think that that it's going to be um short-lived um again it could be five years it could be 10 years but it is definitely on its journey towards death and uh you know i think that we all should have should have expected it at this point you know it's 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 pretty obvious it's just the nature of it all so i just find it's amusing that's a lot of people were like i can't believe all these how much money they lost it's like i mean it's the nature of the game it's just how it goes so so you guys let me know your thoughts uh do you guys think that netflix is going to die sooner than later and you know what do you, how do you think they could recover if they if any you know if they could um do you think that it's focusing more on their own content or you know getting more exclusives um how do you think that they could you know uh uh you know compete against hbo max and disney plus i really don't think they ha can at this point if anything but you guys let me know your thoughts and that's really it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry, I just have a stuffy nose and all that stuff. So I am going to go lay down now and just relax. Hopefully my thoughts are, you know, have come across well. Um, basically what I'm saying is that Netflix is going to die somehow, some way. And I really don't know what we can do uh, to help it. 
Um, and I don't think that the content that they're putting out is enough and is enough for and is enough for anybody um, anymore. And you know, I think that they it, it's basically just you know, it's like how how do I put it? I'm trying to think of a good phrase. Um, it's like when it's like when some it's like when you reach those highs in your life. You know, it's like you reach that high point. And then you just start reaching, it, it all starts going downhill a little bit, you know? This is kind of like Netflix. Like they had their highs with like Stranger Things and they were making it with the movies and all that stuff, getting into festivals, breaking through with the Oscars and all that. And then Disney Plus and HBO Max started showing up and now it's on a downhill spiral. And I don't think that they can really go back up, unfortunately. So, but you guys let me know. Maybe they can. Uh, and you guys let me know what they could do to bring themselves back up. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't know why I just put up two fingers. <laughs> but um, I'm clearly tired, so I'm going to go to bed. Uh, there'll probably be another be there probably be another first impressions video coming your way, so just stay tuned for that. And yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.